Croes oi i'r trydydd sesiwn o Pererin Oedd. Um, this is a, 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 a cross-border uh, participatory arts project um, uh, taking place uh, in, in Wexford and Pembrokeshire. Uh, my name is Rowan, for anyone Eddie Rowan, East Misha Rowan Nineal, um, and I am working with uh, Span Arts in Pembrokeshire um, and Jacob Whitaker, who's um, uh, here recording the Zoom tonight, um, and Alan Wills, uh, who is behind uh, the, the map that I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, I'm working with colleagues in, in Wexford, um, John Wheeline and Rachel Wheeline, um, who uh, live in Gorey and uh, Rachel is a traditional singer and uh, uh, John, uh, a folklore collector. Um, and we're working on this project that is part of um, something called the Ancient Connections Project, which is a collaboration between Wexford County Council and Pembrokeshire County Council that has been um, uh, yeah, trying to um, connect these places through looking at um, stories uh, and shared heritage and culture. And one of the um, one of the things that the project has also been um, doing is uh, they're creating a pilgrimage route between St David's in Pembrokeshire and um, Ferns in Wexford. And uh, so this project, Pererin Oiv, um, I am a pilgrim, is Oilithriach May, is um, is a strand of work that is looking to connect uh, to uh, the Welsh and Irish diaspora um, and uh, to, to, so to, to connect with people who might have a link with these places, these places that are on this new pilgrimage route, um, which is in fact a very ancient pilgrimage route that is being re-established re in a way. And this project um, also seeks to answer the question, um, am I a pilgrim or, uh, or are you a pilgrim? Um, and uh, to which the answer or the obvious answer to the question to me seems to be Pererin Oiv, uh, which is the title of the project and which does translate as I am a pilgrim. Um, but Pererin Oiv is a Welsh hymn um, that was written by William Williams, a Methodist hymn writer in the 19th century, 18th century, 18th, 18th, yeah, Dioch. Um, and uh, so we've been, the, the project is sort of inviting people to sing this song and to pin it to an online map. Um, and uh, so we're sort of using this hymn as our uh, in, inspiration in, in the project. Um, but we're also inviting people to sing, perhaps sing other other songs that connect to the ideas of home and return, pilgrimage, identity and travel. Um, and uh, so there's a sort of connection with um, Pererin Oiv has often been sung in recent years to the tune Amazing Grace. Um, so it, it, it's a Welsh hymn, but it also has a connection with a, an, another tune that, that perhaps has a, um, a different resonance around the world. But I think we're going to also find out about another tune connected to this, this song um, tonight. So um, I'm just going to quickly share my screen. And uh, hope to... show you. Um, so I'm hoping that you're seeing our project map at the moment. Yeah. Uh, so um, already we have some uh, examples of Pererinoiv pinned to, to the map, um, but I thought I would just quickly at the start of this session tonight uh, take you through how to, how to use the map again. Uh, so to contribute to the map, you um, click on contribute. Um, and I wonder whether I could ask Jake to put the address for the map into the chat um, so that you all have that. Um, you click contribute and then you 
click to say that you agree with the terms and conditions. And you can access the map if you have a Google Mail or a Microsoft Windows account. So I'm going to choose Google Mail in this instance. And then I am into the map. Um, and I'm just going to show you um, as a way of <laughs> introducing um, Gareth tonight, uh, how to pin a song to the map. Um, so uh, basically you would upload your song that you'd recorded to YouTube um, and then uh, you can you can pin it to the map. So I'm just going to uh, I'm going to pin um, Gareth's version of Pererin Oiv to the map. Uh, and although this version, I think, was probably recorded in a studio in Llanelli, I'm going to pin it. Um, uh, here. Okay, so to pin something to the map, you move this red uh, sort of target to the place, and then you click on this button here, uh, put on a video on the map, and then you um, you need to get your uh, YouTube link, which I think oh, can I get it? There it is. So you get the YouTube link. Then I go back to the map. I copy the YouTube link into here, and I click done. And then I just click close, and now we have put Gareth on the map. Um, and uh, so I click on that, but I'm not going to play it now because we've got Gareth here tonight in the flesh, and he's going to hopefully play it later. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. Ak, uh, do we mean Cavloino Gareth. Vesi, uh, my. Um, yeah, my. My dad. No, do we wait for it to run our project? Ma. Ma Gathi e Pinio Rubethir map. Um, Ak. Uh, I saw a version of Pereranoiv Nay Khan at Athlon Hevidin Tredic Cavreso Seminari, seen at Julio, a Cassania Dice than Tran or Project at Heno, um, between Valhian, Bod Gareth and Mindy Bod and Ran, or Hon, or Her with my a Weddy Canny version or Pereranoiv, and Marissa my Pam, my Weddy Canner Khan and Dithor all Yawn. A Gareth and Adnabeth is well. The gentle good. Um, I've already bought an um, divani ni get a kerthori atham. Um, they gout. I should have thought now. Um, mm. I the enis uh, gober um, kerthori at kamrai kamri get a album a bar of an barwal and uh, doivi lag in the pedwar. I can doivi lag in a scythe. I the enis a gober kerthori at kamri get a um, ruins at failion. Uh, ond eto hefyd, ers 2016, mae fe wedi bod yn rhan o prosiect ymchwil gyda Prifysgol De Cymru, um, sydd wedi bod yn archwilio cysylltiad um, uh, sydd, sydd, well, sain so, credu oedd yn wedi cael ei adnabod yn, yn dda iawn gan bobl ynglyn ar um, well, cysylltiad rhwng gogledd Dwyrain India a Cymru trwy cenhadaeth meddydistaeth aeth yna yn y, yn y deunawfed ganrif. Um, ac mae Gareth wedi bod yn teithio yna ac yn gweithio gyda cerddorion yna ers o rhwng 2017 a 2018. Um, ac all bod y gwaith yna yw'r... Um, yw'r uh, Yr album ma uh, sef um, Saithain Ci Sŵr uh, sydd uh, wedi cael eu creu gan y Kazi Cymru Collective um, ac uh, mae Gareth yn mynd i sôn am y gwaith mae a hanes a sut mae hwnna 
a peth mae wedi dod at ei gilydd, ond just i gyflwyn fe, dwi mynd i dallen trwy fach o'r or, um, sleef notes fan hyn, uh, achos dwi'n meddwl mae, beth mae Gareth yn, yn sgwennu fan hyn yn, yn siarad hefyd yng Nglyn a um, sut dwi'n teimlo am y, y, y prosiect ni'n, ni'n gwneud hefyd, felly. Mae Gareth yn dweud, I believe there is a good that can come from our ever-increasing connectedness. By taking the time to dialogue and to listen to each other, we gain a deeper understanding of our shared histories. When collaboration across cultures is done with time and care, it can help shape a more positive future for us all. So let us listen to each other's voices and weave together something beautiful. Felly, diolch Gareth, dwi'n mynd i trosglwydd o i, I chi naw. Diolch yn fawr, uh, diolch yn fawr uh, Rowan am, am y gyflwyniad yna, a, a diolch hefyd i spanat uh, am y gwahoddiad i, I siarad a chi heddi. Um, felly, dwi'n mynd i esbonio fel oedd Rowan yn sôn um, ychydig am fy ngysylltiad i gyda y gân per erin ŵydd, um, a'r ffordd daeth y cysylltiad yna i ddod, ac um, mi fyddai yn wedyn yn sôn hefyd i'th ar lot am um, Perthynas Cymru a Brynia Cassi a Ngogledd Ddwyra yn India. A um, y ffordd nath y mynau yn enwedig um, creu, byddwn uh, ni'n gweud, arddull llenyddol um, cynnar uh, byddwch chi'n gweld ar ar Brynia Cassi a dylanwad uh, y gerddoriaeth ar y ffordd oedd nath llenyddiaeth cynnar a gerddoriaeth cynnar Cassi datblygu. Um, Felly, um, dwi'n mynd i rhan i fy sgrin hefyd, na'r man a gyflwyniad PowerPoint rwy'n ymddiheirio, dwi'n gwybod bod nhw'n bach yn hen ffasiwn dyddiau yma, ond yn bennaf dwi'n mynd i fod yn rhan i lluniau a fideos, um, felly gobeithio oedd hwnna, does dim lot o ddarllen i chi wneud, um, beth dwi'n trio gweud, felly dwi'n mynd i rhan i'r sgrin, o dwi'n mynd i mynd i a PowerPoint. Ia, ond pawb yn gallu gweld hwnna. Ia, yeah. 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 felly, um, dwi wedi, um, dwi'n edrych ar uh, cysylltiad rhwng Cymru a Bryniau Cassia, ac um, y gwaith dwi wedi bod yn wneud, byddwn ni'n crynhoi y gwaith yna fel ymchwil a chredigrwydd ar Bryniau Cassia. Um, Enw'r prosiect, dwi wedi bod yn rhan ohoni yw Deialogau Diwylliannol Cymreig a Chasi, uh, prosiect rhyngddisgyblaethol mewn celfyddydau a pherfformiad. Felly, prosiect academaidd uh, yw'r prosiect um, wedi um, sefydlu ym Mhrifysgol De Cymru um, ac um, prosiect ymchwil pedwar blynedd uh, oedd i, felly mae'r cam cyntaf prosiect wedi dod i ben bellach ond mae'r gwaith yn parhau. Um, a beth o'n i'n gwneud oedd ymchwilio'r cysylltiadau rhwng uh, Cymru a Gogledd Ddwyra'n India, fyddai'n sôn mwy am y cysylltiadau yna mewn munud. A gafodd y prosiect i'r iannu gan y Lifo Hume Trust. Uh, pennaeth y prosiect oedd yr athro Lisa Lewis um, sydd hefyd yn um, brif ymchwilydd ac yn athro chyfrwydd wrth i y tal y drama ym Mhrifysgol De Cymru. Uh, Mi oedd Lisa yn edrych ar um, ffyrdd o gysylltu, gysylltu a, uh, troddodiadau theatr a pherfformio Cymru a Bryniau Cassi yng Ngogledd Ddwyrain India. A um, datblygodd um, Lisa cynhyrchiad o'r enw um, Performing Journeys neu Performio'r Daeth a um, oedd hwnna'n teithio o gwmpas uh, India a, a, a Cymru hefyd a mi oedd yna cast gym, gymysg fyna o gerddorion un cerdd o Cassi, un cerdd o Cymraeg sef fi a wedyn un actor o Gymru, Risa Trefor ac actor o um, Bryniau Cassi a Lapdiang Sien a um, mi oedd hwnna'n gweithio gyda'n gilydd yn, yn creu gwaith uh, cynhyrchiad theatr. Um, felly, mi oedd ni hefyd yn gweithio gyda academyddion ar Fryniau Cassia. Dyma uh, Desmond Carmel Plan um, sydd yn uh, fardd ac hefyd yn arbenigo mewn um, llen werin. Ac mae wedi bod yn casglu hanesion gwerin o'r gymunedau Cassia, gymunedau eraill sydd yn y megaleau um, ers rhyw chwater ganrif erbyn hyn, dwi'n meddwl. Um, Mi oedd yn hefyd yn gweithio gyda 
uh, Dr. Helen Davis, or the Nair Arbenigo Meun, um, Casaliada Yethazo, a Kevid Gida Aparna Sharma or UCLA, see the Dutlugi film, see the Adrichard Casaliada Git Moon photography a film, um, a Marquith and a Dali Thord. But you see a mean odd project, um, are all blue then, a caressum of, um, a hos. Rather than mind ruining a drachar, Casaliade Kerthorol, Ron Cumbri, Abrinia Cassia. Um, Vesli Nessia Minogra project, a de Machino Vintria Dringo, Coiden Betel, and um, a Mentre Pahambir, um, Vesli Dachin, or then a glau trum, I mean Clithra Laura, a guide and Botron in Shaman Lam, and um, Honan Guido with a Matechneg on Indivna Viorum Quill, save a Marver Vellum Quill, um, save Dachi and Neid Rubeth, um, Ermuin, uh, um, Chwilio'r Perthynas. Felly, o'n i ysyniad oedd bydd yn i yn defnyddio fy marfer creadigol i am, yn Chwilio'r Perthynas rhwng Cymru a Bryniau Cassia. So, yn fo, achos i cerddoriaeth yw'r ymarfer yna. Felly, o'n i'n trio ffeindio ffyrdd o defnyddio cerddoriaeth i am, chwilio cwestiynau ymchwil um, oedd yn fynyddori i. Um, a wnaeth sôn mwy am y broses yna uh, wrth i ni fynd trwy. Felly, dyna gyflwyniad am only daeth y project i, I dechrau. Um, Dwi'n mynd i'n sôn awr ychydig am gefn dyr y perthynas ac am bryniau casia a giantia. Felly, um, lle gorau i ddechrau yw map. Felly, dyma, dyma map o, o India fel chi gweld, ond dyma megaleia. Right? Felly, dyma rhan o India, fel ddim yn lot o bobl ddim yn sylweddoli sy'n perthyn i India. Um, Mae fe mwyn y lai wedi um, datgysylltu'n gyfan gwbl uh, rhwng, uh, rhag gweddau llyw wlad. Mae yna darn bach o dir yn cysylltu i'ch chi'n edrych lan bwys sicim, rhwng bihar a sicim, ble mae dadji ling. Mae yna darn bach, bach o dir fyna. Mae nhw'n galw e uh, the chicken neck. Mae nhw'n galw e. So, gwddw iar. Um, sy'n cysylltu y gogledd ddwyrain gyda gweddill, ble mae pobl o gogledd ddwyrain yn galw the mainland. Um, sef India. A mae'r gogledd ddwyrain yn rhywle byddwn ni'n gweud a sy'n hynod o wahanol um, i, 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 I weddill India. Um, mae rhywbeth fel cant ag ugen iaith gwahanol fyna o leiaf, mae yna rhywbeth rhy'n nifer o wahanol llwythu ac islwythu uh, yn byw yna. Mae'n ardal fynyddig dros ben. Ac felly mae pob um, mae'r ardal yn llawn bobl sydd wedi dod o adraws y holl um, dros y holl uh, ardal fyna. Felly mae'n dechrau bobl sydd wedi, sy wedi anhanesyddol yn dod o wedi dod o China neu Tibet. Hefyd mae pobl yn wedi dod o y Mekong Delta, wedi dod o'r hyd lan, lan o'r lefydd fel um, Cambodia a Laos y lefydd fel yna. Felly mae'n dechrau gymysgedd mawr o bobl sy'n siarad llawer o ieithoedd wahanol. Hi'n noed o fewn un, yr un llwyth mi fydd yna bobl sydd ddim yn gallu deall i gilydd. Felly, yr enghraifft mae'r pobl sy'n byw yn Naga Land, y pobl Naga, mae yna rhywbeth fel 16 iaith swyddogol um, a mae yna mwy hefyd. A mi fydd yna bobl sydd ddim yn deall i gilydd o fewn y llwyth yna. A mae nhw'n defnyddio y uh, pid, uh, pidgin language wedyn Naga Mis i siarad gyda'i gilydd. Um, y Megaleia, y brif llwyth yw'r bobl Cassi, ac uh, mae nhw'n siarad iaith sydd yn dod o, uh, sydd yn dod o Cambodia, wel, sydd yn dod o rhywle yn Cambodia, um, as, iaith Austro-Asiataidd. Um, sydd yn eithaf unigryw i India, does dim llawer o um, bobl eraill yn India yn siarad iaith Austro-Asiataidd. Um, ond mae yma'r casu'n perthyn yn agotach i iaith fel Cymer yn y byddol yna. Mae'r map yma'n dangos bach yn agos ac dyfu cyn gweld y wahanol taleithiau yn y gogledd ddwyrain, a dyma uh, Shillong y prif ddinas, a dyna le BSC yn treulio rhan fwyaf o amser i um, rhwng 2016 a 2018 yn mynd nôl ymlaen yn gweithio gyda uh, y cerddorion ac y dymyddion yn yr ardal. Um, felly, mae me, ystyr, ystyr megaleia yw cartref y cymylau yn hindi. Um, mae 85 cant o bobl megaleia yn bobl llwythol. Uh, sorry, megaleia yw talaeth um, yn yng Ngogledd Ddwyrain India le bydd be, sy'n gweithio mwyaf. Uh, y grŵp mwyaf niferus yn yr ardal yna yw'r bobl Cassi, ond os chi'n chi gweld fyna 
dim ond pymdeg y cant o'r bobl sydd yn bobl casu. Felly mae llawer o bobl eraill o wahanol gefn diroedd, ond y bobl casu yw'r yw, yw grŵp mwyaf niferus. Um, mae'r tirlun yn fynyddig dros ben ac yn wlyb iawn hefyd. Um, felly dyma, dyma llun o'r West Cassie Hills, wedyn dyma llun o y pistill yr enw No Cali Cai, uh, sydd reit ar uchel diroedd um, uh, yr ardal, um, bwys um, tref yr enw Sora, uh, neu yn, mae'r yn yr enw Hindi, Cherapunji, a dyna le yn yr ardal yna yn, yn reiddio sefydlodd y Cymru yn, yn gyntaf um, e ei gynhadedd cyn symud lawr i Shillong y brif ddinas. Um, Mae sawl man yn India yn hawlio, yn ardal Soran yn wedig, yn hawlio mae nhw yw man lypa'r byd, a fel arfer mae hwnna'n gael ei um, yn, dod, yn, yn, yn wir, yn dod allan yn y, yn y, yn y stats. Uh, mae fe'n symud o bentref i bentref, ond fel arfer un o'r pentref i lan yn Sora yw sy'n derbyn y mwyaf o, 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 o law mewn blwyddyn. Um, dyma llun o Shillong. Um, mae'n ddynas i'r fawr erbyn hyn. Yn, yn swyddogol, dim ond rhywbeth o um, 26 mil o bobl sydd yna, ond os chi'n siarad â pobl fel arfer maen nhw'n gweud miliwn yn y rhywbeth yna, a mae'n brysur iawn. Um, mae'n fe'n tyfu yn fawr nawr wrth i bobl symud o'r wlad i fyw yna. Um, dyma mawcar um, ar ôl symud o Cherapunji uh, i Shillong y mawcar sefydlwyd um, Mission Compound gyntaf. Felly dyma ble uh, oedd y capel, capelu cyntaf, dyma ble oedd y Cymru um, yn, 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 wedi sefydlu hunain. Um, dyma llun o bobl Cassie um, yn ystod dawns traddodiadol. Um, so dyma'r gwisg um, traddodiadol wedi chi'n gweld yn ystod, dim ond yn ystod perfformiad um, o, o ddawns traddodiadol neu seremoni traddodiadol. Um, Erbyn hyn, mae'r wythol 85 y cant o bobl Cassie yn Grisnogion o herwydd y lanwad y Cymru, um, ond mae'r wythol 10 y cant yn dal i ddilyn uh, hyn draddodiadau, um, hyn grefydd traddodiadol y llwyth, sef uh, Caniam Cassie, ac um, mae'r seremonia yma yn rhan o'r um, defodau uh, traddodiadol. Uh, Mae llawer o bobl hyn o'r Cristnogion hefyd yn cymryd rhan yn y defodau yma. Um, Mae yna bach o um, cymysgu o'r o, 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 o ddau dylanwad. Um, Mae hefyd, fel ni'n gweud, o fewn um, y gymuned Cassi, mae yna saith islwyth. Um, so mae ydych chi yn ogystal â bobl sydd yn gweud bod nhw'n Cassi, mae ydych chi'n bobl sy'n dod o bryniau um, jaintia, a dyma gwyl o'r enw beid yn clam, um, es i'r gwyl yma yn 2017, dyma um, gwyl sydd yn digwydd yn jowau, ac um, yn jowau, yn ystod y ganol oesoedd, um, mi oedd un o'r um, y CM, sef y brenin Cassi, um, cael ei drosu i hindwyaeth, ac felly yn, yn gwahanol i, um, i, i bryniau Cassia, yn bryniau jaintia, mae y traddodiadau um, greiddiol y pobl jaintia neu y pobl pna wedi cymysgu gyda hindwyaeth, a dyma gwyl beid yn clam, a chi'n llu'n gweld um, fath o beth sy'n digwydd yma. Felly, um, rod yw enw yr y peth mawr, pethau mawr yma, a mae pob ardal o'r ddinas yn treulio wthnosau yn adeiladu rhein i gyd, ac wedyn yn dod â nhw gyd mewn i'r pwll mawr yma nghanol y dre, ac yn, 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 yn ei arddangos nhw ac yn bont i'n o gwmpas. Um, a ma, yn amlwg, mae ma, ma, ma rhein wedi dod o dylanwad hindwyaeth y lliwiau ar, 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 ar ddull uh, cafyddydol, Ond os chi'n gwrando ar y gerddoriaeth oedd y mymlaen yn y cefndir, be sy'n dach chi'w um, curiadau traddodiadol a, o, o'r llwyth Cassi a hefyd um, sŵn tang mŵri, sef um, sy'n chylig bach fel clarinet, um, y, 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 y sŵn uchel o chi'n cael clywed yn y cefndir, y tang mŵri yw hwnna, am hwnna'n rhywbeth traddodiadol iawn i'r bobl Cassi. Um, 
Ti allan i'r ddinasoedd, mae llawer iawn o bobl Cassi yn dal i fyw bywyd am ei thyddol, dyma llun o pentref Pahambir, um, ble maen nhw'n tyfu reis a pinafal. Fi sy'n treulio eitho lot o amser yn y pentref yma, yn dod i'n abod uh, cerdor o'r enw Rani Maring, um, a mae Rani yn creu popeth allan o deunyddiau o'r goedwig. Felly mae fe wedi creu pob offerin, mae fe'n chwarae, mae fe'n chwarae pob, mae fe'n chwarae tangmwri, mae fe'n chwarae drymiau, mae fe'n chwarae dwytara, ac um, mae ma, ma fe'n dal yn gysylltiadau gyda'r grefft yna o creu yr offer yna a creu deunyddiau traddodiadol allan o deunyddiau sydd ar gael yn y goedwig. Um, mae lot o bobl Cassi yn byw yn y modd traddodiadol yma, unwaith i chi'n symud tu allan i y dinasoedd mawr fel Shillong neu Jowau. Um, Dyma rannu ar y dde, yn chwarae maring od, mae gen i fideo fy yna, wedyn dyma jai uh, macri, sef gwr, uh, graig rannu, mae um, hi yn gwisgo jain sem sef y uh, gwisg traddodiadol Cassi. Um, Na eich siart, mae dangos fideo chi hwyrach mlaen o rannu chwarae maring od. Um, felly, o'r diwedd i'n cyrraedd y cysylltiad Cymraeg, um, mae fe'n diddorol, mae'n broses diddorol, dwi'n meddwl, os ych chi'n diddori yn y Cefn dir yr holl beth, mae'r llyfr gan an, uh, Academydd Awstraliaidd o'r enw Andrew May um, yn sôn am um, Welsh Missionaries and British Colonialism. Uh, um, mae fe'n sôn am hanes sefydlu'r cynhadaeth. Uh, um, mae gyd yn dechrau gyda'r uh, y boi yma, Thomas Jones, uh, beth Thomas Jones yn nath ei geisio i fod yn um, cynhadwr gyda'r London Missionary Society. Um, ond Nath ei cwmpa mas gyda'r London Missionary Society a mi oedd y Cymru'n teimlo bod nhw ddim yn cael chwarae teg gan y London Missionary Society beth bynnag am, am blynyddoedd. Mi oedd ychydig, wel, beth cryn dipyn o anghydfod uh, rhwng y Cymru a'r LMS. Ac felly, yn yr 1840, sefydlodd y Cymru um, cymdeithas cynhadol ei hunain. Um, a so, y methodistiaid Calvinaidd nath sefydlu'r cymdeithas yma yn Lerpwl. A uh, um, Thomas Jones oedd y cynhadwr cynta a thei allan i, I India, i Fryniau Cassia yn 1840, nath ei gyrraedd yn 1841, a'r fwrdd llong uh, o'r enw'r Jamaica, uh, clipau te oedd e. Um, felly, mae Thomas Jones um, yn, yn gymeriad uh, hynod y ddiddorol, dwi'n meddwl, mi oedd e'n Yn y marni, os fi'n darllen y ffordd oedd e'n behafio, mi oedd e'n hefyd yn antireithiwr, dwi'n meddwl oedd e'n moyn teithio i weld y byd, ond mi oedd e hefyd yn berson grefyddol iawn. Ac um, dewiswyd bryniau Cassi a bron um, just ar, ar, ar air rhywun oedd wedi bod yna yn, yn, yn y fyddyn, yn y fyddyn prydeinig, rhyw deng mlynedd cyn. Ac um, dwi'n meddwl nathon nhw ddewis fynd i yr ardal yma, oherwydd Mi oedd um, crefydd y bobl Cassi ddim wedi sefydlu mewn lefydd fel llyfrau, ddim, o ddim deml, o ddim system ffurfiol o grefydd fel byddwch chi'n cael mewn rhywbethol hindwiaeth neu rhywbethol yna. Mae system credoau Cassi wedi seilio ar defodau. A dwi'n meddwl oedd y Cymru'n meddwl bydd yr hyn o'n wneud pobl yn haws i drosu i Gresnogaeth. Um, felly, Dyma pam ddewisodd Thomas Jones mynd allan i'r ardal yma. Bydd y Cymru yna rhwng 1841 a 1869. Dyma llun o'r 1940 o ysgolion. Felly y Cymru nath sefydlu yr ysgolion ar ysbytau cyntaf yn yr ardal. A fel, fel ni weld, ni weld, nhw hefyd nath sefydlu um, well, safoni y iaith Cassi a troi yn iaith ysgrifenedig. Um, cyn i'r Gymru cyrraedd. Mi oedd y, y iaith Cassi wedi gael ei ysgrifennu yn uh, sgript Bengaleg, ond nath y ddim wir um, uh, pigolan i fod yn onest, a uh, dim ond ar ôl i'r Cymru cyrraedd, a dysgu bobl Cassi i darllen yn defnyddio'r sgript rhyfeinig, um, dechreuodd y llenyddiaeth Cassi uh, o'r eidrwydd. Ac um, mae'n diddorol fel Cymro, Cymraeg yn darllen yr iaith Cassi, achos mae'r popeth wedi cael ei sillafu yn union o'n ffenetig fel byddwch chi'n sillafu yn y Gymraeg. Um, 
felly dyma um, eglwys uh, yn nong sawliau un o lefydd cyntaf Cymru um, mynd i gynhadu. A fel ni'n sôn gynnau, mae erbyn hyn, mae'r ymfwyo bobl casu yn Gristnogion. Um, mae'r byfel 45% o honynt yn Presbyteriaid, sef yn, o, 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 o flanwad y Cymru, basically. A, mi ddath y Presbyteriaid allan o'r Methodistiaid Calvinaidd. A wedi mae'r gweddill yn, yn, yn Catholigion. Um, felly, daeth um, cynhadaeth hwyrach o uh, yr eidal y Don Bosco uh, i'r adal hefyd. Felly, yn awr mae'n tua hanner a hanner bobl yn Presbyteraidd neu'n ne, ne, ne Catholigion. Um, a fel ni'n gweithio 10 y cant yn dal i ddilyn y Seng Casi. Um, y brif modd, dwi'n meddwl, nodd y Cymru yn efengyli ar y bryniau oedd i defnyddio cerddoriaeth ac emynau ac dyma gwers nathon nhw ddysgu um, ar ôl treulio y uh, deinawfed ganrif yn efengyli ac yn treial um, uh, yn treial uh, gwasgaru gair uh, crist um, yng Nghymru. Um, felly nathon nhw wneud ymryniau casia, mwy neu lai, yr union ein peth ac nathon nhw wneud yng Nghymru. Ac un o'r pethau hynny oedd, oedd i dat cysylltu pobl, uh, oedd i ar ei, um, felly ei draddodiad ei gwerin, ac i'r bywyd secular yna, um, llun werin, yn wedi cynneion gwerin secular, a um, yn y pen draw hefyd, cymryd alawon gwerin, a'i Cristnogeiddio nhw i wneud nhw'n Gristnogol, yn troi nhw mynd i emynau. Um, a nathon nhw'n wneud rhyn peth ar y ffriniau Casia. Um, felly, dyma William Williams Pantacelin, um, un at sgwennu geiriau uh, per er ein wyf, a nath y sgwennu'r wyf cant emyn, dwi'n meddwl. Um, mi oedd e yn brolific dros Ben. Ac um, dwi'n mynd i falle um, neu berfformiad bach o'r o dan yma, ond cyn, cyn i fi wneud hwnna, neu jyst ysbonio ychydig bach amdano fe. Felly, pan ych chi'n edrych ar y darn o gyddoriaeth ar y chwith, byddai yn gweud bryniau Cassia, uh, sef Cassie Hills, ia. Yeah. Felly, dyma emyn wedi cael ei enwi ar ôl y maes cenhadol. Wedyn ar y top dde wedyn, ych chi'n gweld hen alaw. A mae hwnna'n digwydd lot yn, yn y llyfr y mynau. Mae'r emyn yma yn y llyfr y mynau Cassie dal i fod, llyfr Cassie cacot jyngr wai, dych chi'n dal i ffeindio llawer iawn o emynau o Gymru, ac mae'r emyn yma yn un ohonynt. Um, a basically digwydd yma yw mae'r alaw yn, 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 yn alaw hun, mae'r alaw, alaw werin yw hon. Mae um, rhywun wedi rhywbwynt cysylltu'r geiriau gyda geiriau pantacelin gyda'r alaw, ond um, yr alaw gwreiddiol oedd can werin o'r enw wel bachgen ifanc y dwyf. Um, felly, dyma un o'r gynneon falle nath dechrefu bant yn, yn holi cwestiynau am y ffordd oedd y Cym Cymru yn efeng yli yn defnyddio y mynau, a sut oedd hwnna yn perthyn i'n un, un draddodiad gwerin ni, a sut oedd y ni yn um, defnyddio y mynau i cael gwared o Y diwylliant gwerin y bobl casu. Um, <coughs> a dyma offerin o'r bryniau casia, dyma um, dwy tara sydd yn golygu dwy tant, two strings. Um, mae pedwar tant arni erbyn hyn, ond dwi'n meddwl yn y ffyrdd hanesyddol, dim ond dwy fyddai. Felly be yn ei wneud, yn hydrych yna canu um, Hydrych yna canu alaw, hydrych yna canu geiriau pantacelin yma, neu canu y gan werin gwreiddiol, sef wel bachgen ifanc y dwyf. Um, so felly, dwi'n mynd siŵr beth sy'n angen, os angen i fi stopio rhannu, neu dwi'n just dwi'n llyw parhau. I think um, it'd be nice to see you playing, Gareth. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, I've seen Stop Your Honey. Do you mean Stop Your Honey, too? Yeah. Yeah. But see, can you? Well, bye. 
bach well fel hyn. Os dyw'n mynd fel hyn, felly. Felly dyna wel bach gen i fan cydwyf, os dwi'n mynd ôl i rhan i'r sgrin. Um, Felly, beth oedd yn fynydd, un o'r pethau oedd yn fynyddori i am y gan yna, oedd pan ych chi'n mae'r geiriau Cymraeg yn sôn am bach gen i fan cydwyf, um, bron i'n ar hugen oed, ac mae fe'n rhywun sy'n gyfoethog, mae gynddo fe gwartheg a defaid a pedair tas o fawn, ond mae fe'n anlwcus wrth pan ych chi'n pa mynd dod at cariad ac uh, mae fe'n gweud bod yn debyg i'r pysgotwr uh, sy'n cedded ar hyd lan y llyn yn gallu gweld y holl pysgot yma ond ffili dal yr un. Yeah? Ac mwn o'n esiampl o gan werin secular, ond yn ysg i'n edrych ar yr un alaw yma gyda bryniau casia, um, beth sy'n dyrch i fy'n hyn yw disgrifiad itha, um, well, itha uh, vivid o uh, y beirniadaeth ac uffern uh, gan Williams Pantacellin um, yn sôn am pethau fel y, y mwydyn uh, sydd yn bitar, bitar cnawd a pethau fel hyn. Um, felly, um, mae yna um, amlwg gwahaniaeth enfawr yna um, yn hermau geiriau, ond dyma'r fath o, o emynau mi oedd y cynhadon cynnar yn cyfieithu i'r iaith casu, 
ac wedyn yn dysgu bobl casu i ganu. Um, felly, pan ych chi'n un o'r peth, peth, pethau ni'n wneud gyda um, hydweithwyr casu, oedd cyfieithu nôl ymlaen o'r casu i'r Saesneg i'r, i'r Gymraga, o'r Gymraga i'r, i'r Saesneg i'r casu, er mwyn triod deall y ffordd oedd y iaith yn y llenyddiaeth cynnar yma, ac y mynau casu hyd heddiw yn adlewyrchu ar arfyll eitha, to, hen, erbyn hen, hen ffasiwn dros ben uh, pant y celyn a, a, a delweddau um, pant y celyn, a wnaeth sôn ychydig mwy am hwnna pan yn un mynd trwy perer un ŵyf. Ond um, dyma un o'r gynion oedd yn cysylltu uh, fi gyda'r syniad yma o'r dyddodiad gwerin a um, dylanwad Cristnogaeth arno fe yng Nghymru ac Arwyniau Casia, ac wedyn oedd yn diddorol wedyn rhan i'r alaw yma gyda fy nghydweithwyr uh, Casi um, a gweld i ymateb nhw. <coughs> um, Na ddim mynd trwy hwn, achos mae'n ymwneud i fod yn gormod o ddarllen, ond be mae'r geiriau yma yn disgrifiadau yw'r hyn, um, mi oedd yna ail adfywiad diwygiad crefyddol yng Nghymru um, yn 1945 a mi nath yr un fath o beth digwydd ar fyniau Casia, siŵr o fod o dan, o dan dylanwad y, y cynhadon o ddallan yna, ond un o'r pethau mae pobl, pobl yn disgrifio yn, yn y geiriau yma yw troi lan at y capel a gweld pobl Casia yna yn canu trwy'r nos um, ac yn gweithio hyn yn lan mewn i bron fath o ffrenzi yn canu'r emynau yma. Um, a, a, geiriau fel gwaith, so emynau cyfarwydd o gwaith y groes, um, ond dyma'r un oedd yn gafael mwyaf apparently tyred ang arglwydd mae dy gwmni'n well na'r gwyn, a gwyn hefyd yn fod yn rhywbeth eitha newydd i'r fyniau Casia um, er um, cynhadw Thomas Jones nath cyflwyno uh, distyllu a creu alcohol i'r bobl Casi um, a gafodd yna um, uh, canoliadau eitha, eitha ddifrifol hefyd. Um, so geiriau pantigel yn yw'r un ad um, uh, mae dy gwmni'n well na'r gwyn. Um, ac felly mi oedd dylanwad geiriau pantigel yn er oedd wedi marw ers bron ganrif erbyn y pwynt yma yn, yn ddylanwad mawr ar um, llenyddiaeth a hefyd uh, cerddoriaeth cynnar casu, crefyddol cas, pobl casu. Os ych chi eisiau darllen um, cyfrol Saesneg sydd yn, sydd yn esbonio'r hanes mewn ffyrdd llai academaidd, byddwn ni'n awgrymu llyfr Nigel Jenkins gwalia un casia. Dyma ddoch chi'n cyffeind i fyneth o'r rhad ar Amazon. Um, mi oedd Nigel yn bardd arbennig o dda um, o brifysgol a bertawe ac um, nath e teithio mas fyna a sgwenu am, am i brofiad um mae'r llyfr yn ddifur iawn ac yn mynd trwy'r hanes ac yn esbonio hanes Thomas Jones hefyd. Felly, dwi'n mynd i'ch sôn ychydig am y fath o ymchwil oedd i ni'n wneud. Felly, dwi'n chi newydd gweld y dwi tara ac dyma oedd yr offeryn um, nath wir um, nes i dechrau meddwl oedd yn ffordd da o trwy'r cysylltu gyda y, y gyddorion casu. O herwydd, Mae dwi tara yn offeryn sydd yn gael eu chwarae'n draddodiadol o gwmpas y tân. Um, so felly, chi'n canu o gwmpas yr eilwyd ac yn rhannu hanesion gwerin ac yn rhannu um, caneon gwerin. Um, a hefyd, mae yna dieddiod hefyd o'r chwarae rhythmau penodol sydd yn mynd gyda fathau gwaith man fel gwynio, pethau byddwch chi'n wneud yn dawel y gyda nos. Mae'r offeryn lot rhy distaw i chwarae mewn dawns un o bethau yna. Ond mae'r arddull casu o chwarae yn dynwared rhythmau byddwch chi wedi byddwch chi yn cael ar, ar offer yn y taro mewn dawns, ond mae'r ma, ma, um, ma, ma rhythmau chi'n chwarae ar y dwi tara yn dynwared y rhythmau yna. Um, felly dyma Meban Lingdo o brifysgol Martin Luther yn, yn arddangos rhai o rwahanol um, rhythmau ar, ar yr offerin.
Felly, um, rydym mor enw lingnau i hwnna, um, a sydd yn golygu um, diog bron. Um, mae'r mynydda hamddennol a mynydda swing yn ddyfed. Um, so, dyna rydym lingnau. Dyna un o rydymau mwy a gyffredin dych chi'n cael a, a, a gydoriaeth Cassi. Dyma um, teulu Rising Bor Cyrcolang at sydd ar y dde. A mae fe'n perfformio yma gyda'i uh, greu nai. Ac um, Rising Bor nath neud, nath creu yr offeryn nes i chwarae gynnau uh, y dwi tara. Um, mae Rising Bor yn arbenigo mewn um, creu offeryn y traddodiadol Cassi. Mae ydych chi'n gallu clywed... Um, Dyn meddwl yr un rhythm ffyn ein? Gwn i'n weld. O na, rhythm gwahanol. Idea of a camera work. For the um, rhythm marathon and shad white to Hunna, um, so if downs are clever. Um, uh, shad yw down, so we're in white yw cleddyf, ac um, mwna yn rhythm gyffredin arall. Dyna y dau rhythm yna i rhoi mwy o gyffredin, ond mae yna rhywbeth o 27 rhythm gwahanol, a mae pobl yn arbenigo mewn chwarae uh, rhai ohoni nhw. Um, felly, dros y flynyddoedd, des i un abod rising yn eitha da, um, mi oedd yn i, mynd, i, i weld yn i, yn i bentref yna yn leit cyr hong, ac um, nes i brynu yr uh, offeryn yma, oedd i wrth o fe, a wedyn daeth i'r stiwdio yn Shillong a nath ni recordio sawl gan gan gynnwys uh, un, 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 un gan nath Rising Sgwenni o'r enw, er, er enw Mei Mariang, sef Mam Natur. Um, nath ni hefyd recordio Perer in Oif, uh, myth Rising yn hynod o um, um, hapus gyda'r alaw yna, oedd yn, oedd yn, oedd yn hoffi achos oedd yn swnio mor estron a mor wahanol i gyddoriaeth Cassi. Um, a hefyd nath ni'n recordio, wel bach gen ifanc ydw i'w hefyd. Um, felly, rhaising yn chwarae uh, ar y dwytar a fynd yn chwarae ar y gitar. Mae rydd mai yn bwysig iawn, dy meddwl, bobl Cassi. Dy meddwl, um, oherwydd mae yna hanes mor diweddar o diwylliant llafar. Um, cyn i'r Cymru cyrraedd, mae dim llawer o bobl yn gallu darllen o gwbl. A no, pobl yn ddim yn defnyddio'r llythrennau. Felly, mae lot, lot o gwybodaeth a lot o hanes just wedi gael i just wedi gynnwys mewn meddyliau pobl um, yn ei dawnsiau, ei dyfodau ac hefyd yn ei gyrthoriaeth. A mae'r rhythmau yn ffordd arall yn ei hyn. Felly, dyma, um, dyma jai macri yn arddangos rhythm ar y mwyn, sef offeryn dych chi chwarae gyda'r ceg, darn o bambu yw e, sy'n ystyn y ceg, a wedi mae yna cortyn, a dych chi'n tynnu'r cortyn, ac yn newid siâp y ceg, a mae'n neud sŵn, chydig fel, um, well, chydig bach fel brogan yr rhywbeth, i fi'n glystio i. Ond wedi mae rhythm mae jai yn chwarae fy'n hyn, yn um, hefyd yn cario neges, a mae'n rhythm byddai menyw yn chwarae, er mwyn os oedd dyn yn dod i weld y, y teulu ac eisiau, 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 eisiau gael o draw, os oedd y menyw ddim eisiau cael cwmni y dyn, bydd hi'n eistedd mynd y tŷ a chwarae rhythm yma. Uh, so, kind of the bugger off rhythm, um, leave me alone. So, um, dyma jai yn chwarae y rhythm yna. Um, Gyn i weld.
ti dyna, dyna unorydd mewr mwyn, a wedyn dyma pentref pa hambyr, sydd yna dal yr enw Riboi, sydd, sydd yn gerbron a, a Sam. Felly, pan ni gyda um, Rising Board a'i deulu yn laith cyrch hon, maen nhw'n reid ar ben yn mynyddoedd, chwe mil droed fedd lan, um, a mae'r tirlun yn fynyddig ac yn rhyb iawn. Lle lawr yn y um, pa hambyr, dych chi ar gweilod y dyffrynoedd, a mae'r mae tywydd lot fwy uh, twym a llaeth. A dyma rhan ni, uh, mae'r un yn chwarae, offer yn enw Maring Odd, a dyma un, 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 un mae wedi'i wneud i hun, croen madfall sydd yna ar drwm uh, 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 yr y Ac um, mae fe chwarae a lawon uh, Cymraeg, um, achos mae lot yn nhw'n nad yn byddus iawn, yn wedig uh, ran, ein anthem cenedlaethol mae hen mlad fy'n hadau, um, mae hwnna yn bodoli ar fyniau Cassi a ar ffyrdd y gan rhy Cassi, oedd yn anthem anffurfiol i'r bobl Cassi um, am gyfnod go hir. Felly dyma rhan ni yn, 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 yn chwarae uh, maringod. Ni, a wedi bod fe'n mynd off ar y tangents. <laughs> On, um, dyna oedd y tro cyntaf i gwrdd o rannu, ond dros y flynyddoedd dwi'n sy'n nabod rannu nitho da. Um, a dyma tro dwetha, dwi'n meddwl, dwi'n ffeel ag un digna, dyma tro dwetha i fi gwrdd o fe, ac mi oedden ni wedi dysgu chwarae o dwi'r dwi tarae erbyn hyn. A nitho ni recordio cwpl o gynion, jyst fyny'n ynghanol y pentre. Um, Felly, um, wrth i fi weithio ar y prosiect, yn ogystal â gweithio gyda cerddorion, a dod i treol dod i nabod traddodiad y gwerin Cassi, roedden ni hefyd yn edrych ar y cysylltiad y llynyddol yna. Um, ac prif lenor y bobl Cassi yw'r bardd Soso Tam, sydd yn y llun yma, ac um, mi oedd um, gafodd i ddylanwadu'n fawr gan un o'r cynhadon, yr enw John Roberts, Oedd yn ôl bob sôn yn, yn arbennig o dda gyda ei, ei ddealltwriaeth o'r iaith Cassi. A fe oedd yn gyfrifol am dysgu um, llawer o bobl Cassi um, i, i, i sgwenu. Ac, ac hefyd, be wedi'r sôs o tam oedd nath, nath, nath ei ddysgu bob, bobl Cassi um, siwrdd i parchu ei iaith i hunain. Um, ac 
mi o sos y tam o dan ddylanwad John Roberts, di'n credu, yn um, frwdfrydig iawn am ddiwylliant Casti, uh, nath eu sgwenni um, um, cerdd um, am hanesion um, traddodiadol y bobl Casti, um, sy'n sôn am uh, fath y chwedlau am ffurfiad y bobl, a leddaethon nhw, a pythfyrnas gyda'i dwi'a, peth y felly. Ac um, mae gwaith sos o tam yn, 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 yn hynod y ddaw, sych chi'n os os um, cyfled a chi. Mae'n mae rhai o'r weithio wedi cael eu cyfieithu i'r Isusneg e, 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 hefyd. Um, mae ddim yn trwy, gan dyma fy cyfieithio di o un o'i gerddi mwyaf adnabyddus, um, be bydd yn ei gweud yw, enw'r cerddiw ci mawl yn ei, um, corals, actually, yw'r gair yn casu, achos yn um, yn y wylliau'n casu mae ma y cwrel yn, 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 yn ffrifio lan lot o'r gemwaith y pethau fel yma. Um, a be mae fy'n sôn yn y gerdd yw, um, bod ein mynd allan gyda, gyda'r wawr yn triol casglu y gwlith, um, a mae'n disgrifio'r gwlith ar y, ar y gwair fel ei dywylliant e, a rhywbeth mor fregus bod ein gallu diflannu gyda'r gwres y dydd. Uh, mae, mae fe'n rhoi y tasg iddi i'w hunan i fe'n allan i gasglu um, y gwlith yma, uh, y perlau bach yma o uh, oedd i wylliant e. Achos oedd mi oedd yn, mi oedd yn poeni, a mi oedd y cynhadon hefyd yn poeni, bod cymaint o mewn fudwyr yn dod i fryniau Cassia um, yn y pendraw bydd y, bydd y bobl Cassia yn cael ei gwthio allan ac yn colli ei iaith o'i diwylliant. Um, a mi, o, mi oedd y Cymru yn frwdfrydig am gwarchod yn wedig yr iaith, Um, um, ond yn amlwg mi oedd nhw hefyd um, yn ywedig yn y dyddiau cynnar um, yn itha wrthwynebol i dod ar diwylliant traddodiadol i mewn i'r ysgolion ar, ar um, eglwysi ac o gynlyniad man a wedi bod datgysylltiad um, fel ddigwydd oedd yng Nghymru hefyd rhwng y bobl Cassi a'i diwylliant traddodiadol yn wedig ym, os ydyn nhw'n Gresnogion. Um, a mae erbyn hyn mae pobl yn, 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 yn ail ddarganfod ei, ei diwylliant, ond mi oedd hwnna'n bendant un o'r un o'r, un o'r uh, dylanwadau uh, neu gyddol byddwch chi'n gweud daeth allan o'r cynhadaeth fel sydd yn aml yn digwydd gyda perthynas trefedigaethol fel hyn. Felly, roedd yn ein digweithio gyda academyddion a beirdd yn enwedig, um, mae yna llyfr arbennig Folk Tales of India, um, Around the Hearth, Cassie Legends, gan Cyn Pam Singh Nongkingri, sydd yn arbennig o dda ar gyfer um, hanesion uh, Cassie, a chi'n cael gwellt dwy'r llwriaeth o'r hen gref, grefydd o'r um, or hanesion yma i gyd. Ond mi oedd i ni hefyd yn gweithio gyda bardd o'r enw Esther Siem, sydd wedi sgwennu sawl cyfrol o farddoniaeth, a llyfr o straeon byrion o'r enw Memwa in Water, Speaks the Wa Um Cra, sydd yn um, dweud hanes, sy'n, sy'n cyfres o hanesion byrion ydyn nhw um, wedi lleoli o gwmpas yr afon, ond wedi gweud o persbectif yr afon, felly yr afon sydd yn eich tywys trwy uh, pob hanes, ond ych chi'n gweld mae'r umcrat i'r, i'r afon sy'n llifo trwy Shillong. A dwi sy'n abod Esther yn eitha da, felly bydd ni'n rhannu um, cyfieithiadau o um, ymynau, um, mae Esther hefyd yn bresbyteraidd, ac oedd ei chwarae organ yn y capel, felly oedd ei'n berson hynod o, hynod o ddeallus a hynod o um, wybodus am, am, am cyddoriaeth ymynau a farddoniaeth. Um, mae llyfr gan Desmond Carmel Plang sydd yn edrych ar ffoclo imprint yng Ngogleddwyr yn India a hefyd cyfieithiad diweddar uh, o hanesion sos o tam Tales of Darkness and Light. Um, felly trwy gyfnod y uh, uh, y cyfnewidiad yna, cyfnewidiad yna bydd sy'n sgwennu cynneion ar y cyd gyda gyddorion Cassi a hefyd yn um, sgwennu cynneion wedi ysbrydoli gan y fath o um, uh, sgyrsia oedd ni'n cael gyda y beirdd Cassi. Um, felly, ers i mi gorffyr fy ymchwil yn 2019, dwi wedi bod yn ôl i fryniau Cassi dwywaith a hefyd mae'r rhai o'r gyddorion yn actor, actorion wedi dod yma. Felly, Dyna um, lapdiang sy'n mae Benedict hynny o'r ta um, bwys garndol ben maen tra bod ni ar daith um, yn gwmpas um, Cymru gyda'r uh, perfformio daith. Mae dyma pryt macri um, ar y top, y top dde ym hedref Pahambir. 
Um, nath pryt recordio uh, mwyn ar gyfer yr album, nethon ni'n neud, a wedyn nath labdiang sian sydd, um, sydd ar y ddeun y llun ar y chwith uh, recordio uh, un o'i cherddi hi i rhythm y mwyn, a wedyn nes i roi cyfeiliant ar y sodd Ar y gweilod, ych chi'n llu gweld Rhysap Trefor a Labdiang Sien yn perfformio, yn, uh, perfformio daith yn Joai, mewn ysgol yn Joai, ac yn y cefn dyrch chi'n llu gweld Fynne ar y dwytara a uh, uh, Benedict Hynny Ta ar, 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 ar y uh, fliwt bambu. Wedyn ar y de gweilod, ych chi'n gweld Desmond Sun sydd yn, sy'n DJ a uh, Cerddor o Shillong yn recordio yn y studio, neth ni'n sgwennu can gyda nhw'n gilydd ar nhw camper um, sydd yn golygu bydden iawn ac um, dros y cyfnod y pandemig gafodd yna y, 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 y gan yna i ddefnyddio er mwyn hyrwyddo bobl i gael y frechlyn, felly ni'n falch iawn o'n y gweld o'n y fans yn Shillong yn chwarae'r gan yn gweud, it'll be ok, camper, camper, ym jiwle le, dewch a cael, 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 cael eich frechlyn. Felly, um, Daeth yr album allan yn uh, llynedd ym mis mai a um, ers hynny wedi bod yn tri alf ffeindio ffyrdd o'r rhan i'r gwaith ac perfformio. Um, be na'i wneud nawr ar ôl gweud cwblau eisiau bwn, diolch yn fawr, uh, diolch unwaith eto i Rowan O'Neill ac uh, diolch uh, hefyd i Spanart ac i Prifysgol De Cymru a'r Cassie Cymru Collective nôl yn, yn Shillong a Megaleia. Be na'i wneud yw canu pererin oedd a wedyn falle agor lan ar gyfer cwestiynau, ti'n o'n iawn? Felly, um, cyn i fi, felly, cyn i fi ddechrau canu, neu jyst sbonio, mae'r gan yma hefyd yn adlewyrchu, adlewyrchu perfeth o arddull pantycelyn, byddwn ni'n gweud. Um, mae fe'n disgrifio um, Anial dir a, a um, bod ein crwydro yn chwilio am yr ysbryd sanctaidd a dyna oedd, pe, dyna oedd Pantacelyn yn neud oedd teithio gwmbas Cymru ar gefnasyn yn, yn efengyli ac yn, ac yn rhannu i, 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 I ganeon yn y fe. Ac felly pererin oedd um, Pantacelyn i bod bo pwrd pas ac um, Dwi'n meddwl mae lot o'i sgwennu yn adlewyrchu i'r ffaith oedd yn treulio lot o'i amser ar gefn, gefn mil neu ceffyl yn mynd o gwmpas Cymru. Felly mae yna lot o greigiau garw, taith hir, um, glaw a hefyd weithiau anialwch. A wedyn hefyd i, I gwrthgyferbynu hwnna, mae fe'n rhoi mewn lot o ddelweddau o baradwys um, a chi'n clywed am bethau fel pomegranadau a bethau fel yna. A dwi'n meddwl dyna be oedd yn uh, pelio i'r bobl Gymraeg hefyd am fynd i India, achos mi oedd nhw'n edrych ar India fel rwle exotig, a rwle oedd yn swnno fel sydd yn dod allan o un o gerddi Pantacelyn. <coughs> Felly, mae canu pererin oedd. Dyma'r fersiwn oedd y Rising mor cyn arno. Ac ie, mae yna fersiwn yr albwm o Finnau Rising a chwarae hon. Honey, 
גרוע עם כמה חם, פיר פרד ויסטראוק, מהיר את ארנב המבלד, פלמי צור ואבדירי, ענקניר ענפם Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, yeah, the, um, yeah, that's an amazing presentation. Um, uh, lots and lots to talk about there. Um, do we just, um, Cachwyn, um, well, just one got in question, really, and then at dawn now, uh, I just start giving prayer in oil. Yeah. I, I, I think I'm right, but the, um, yeah, the the kid Carol and and Castia, they mean they mean half your turn. No, oh, they're in half your turn. Oh, 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 they're in half your turn. Yeah, I cost them more wahanol. Okay, okay. I think I'm right. More yamadon, I think. Gasad, but see, um, I mean, don't do that actually. Um, but see, I know don't you hear right? Uh, gafodd ei gyfansoddi gan um, cerddor o Gymru, ond pan oedd ar ôl iddo fe symud i Philadelphia yn Unol Daleithiau, America. Felly, um, nath Daniel Prothero oedd enw'r um, cyfansoddwr. A nath ei symud i America pan oedd ennill ei ifanc. Dwi'n meddwl, dwi'n meddwl bod fe i'n dig nawn ar y beth. Um, a nath ei sgwennu'r alaw yma yn y 1870au. Um, uh, in Cymru, mae hiraethu am Gymru o dde, ac um, i fy nglystiau i, mae'r alaw yn um, itha, mae yna elfennau o uh, tra, uh, y draddodiad gwerin yna. Um, Mae ma, ma dôn lledd fy yna, um, ta ma'n ambell i nodyn byddwch chi ddim yn cael mewn can werin byddwn ni'n gweud, ond mae eitha lot ohono fe yn, itha, yn sôn o'n eitha draddodiadol. Um, a dwi'n cymryd, mae dyna oedd bwriad Daniel Prother o hefyd, oedd yn hiraethu, enw alo yw hiraeth, a dwi'n cymryd oedd yn hiraethu am Gymru ac, am, ac felly yn meddwl am, felly hyn alawon oedd yn gyfarwydd gyda. Um, felly, to a reswm wnes i ddod efo mynd i'r prosiect oedd oherwydd um, geiriau pantacelin, um, fel yn ni'n gweud, o'n i'n meddwl oedd yn y siampl da o, o arddull pantacelin. Um, ac wedi mwyn gweld sydd oedd y beirdd mynd i ymateb, ond yr ymateb cryfagus i oedd gan Rising, uh, achos oedd e'n mwynhau chwarae'r alaw cymaint. Okay, yeah. um, ac a neithach chi clywed pobl yn canu yr emyn na yn Egalea? Na, um, dych chi yn... Um, dych chi yn osoch chi'n mynd i capel uh, um, ar fyny y Cassia, mi fyddwch chi siwr o fod yn clywed am bellu emyn Gymraeg, uh, wedi gyfieithu i'r casu yn amlwg. Um, ond mae rai hen ffasiwn iawn fel rhain, fel, fel pererin o ŵf neu fel um, bryniau casia, dwi'n meddwl maen nhw allan o ffafwr erbyn hyn, a fyddwch chi'n clywed mwy, dwi'n meddwl maen nhw'n ddylanwad mwy uh, o gyddoriaeth pentecostal erbyn hyn, a dwi'n meddwl dwi'n nhw ddim yn edrych i Gymru bellach, ond maen nhw'n dal lot am yn y Cymraeg, hyn am yn y Gymraeg yn y, yn y llyfr yma ne. A uh, os ydych chi'n siarad gyda enwedig bobl hun o'r Eglwys Presbyteraeth, byddwn nhw'n gyfarwydd gyda lot fawr ohonynt. Okay, yeah, ddiddorol. Um, diolch. Yeah, um, would anybody else like to ask Gareth a question? I'm just checking that there is nothing in the chat. Um, if um if you want to just raise your hand if you want to to say anything um i just uh, oh, reese 
be yeah great thanks hi there um thanks Gav. that was really really cool um my name is Reese. i'm from swansea university i'm a researcher in a phd researcher into the connection between the welsh and india in the colonial period mm -hmm. um basically you alluded to it a little bit about this kind of dual role of um the welsh missionaries is almost kind of like a, a celebrant of Cassie culture but also in a way like a destructor of Cassie mm. culture and the previous one yeah um, and I think that kind of quite often speaks to their kind of dual role that they were imperial agents but they were mm. imperial agents which were often in contradiction or opposition to other forms of imperialism particularly the yeah. imperial state and I just wondered whether in terms of modern Cassie uh, musical literary culture or, or historic whether that kind of dual role or whether or not the kind of idea of a missionary being kind of like destructive um comes into into their kind of traditional writing at all or when, yeah, yeah. It, it it is increasingly so yes but um it, it, i think um when um when you read older older material um it's almost always kind of glowing and i uh, i think because as well um, because so many people converted to Christianity that they they see it as you know that that the, the, you know that they brought the light into in, 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 into into uh, the Cassie Hills and so it's very difficult to get that disconnect with that but it has been happening more in recent times it's especially um, writers like Esther Siem um, who's written about um, the Cassie culture from uh, the, the the influence of the oral culture on Cassie culture and. Um, Yes, there's more of an there's more of a kind of critical eye being cast on the on the colonial period and, and on the Welsh mission. Um, you know, in general, there is sort of there are certain missionaries that I think are quite sort of lauded. Um, Thomas Jones being one of them. Also, John Roberts, who I mentioned, because he can because he translated so many works into Cassie, including actually quite a lot of Cassie folk tales. Uh, they see them as well. They call they call Thomas Jones the the father of Cassie of the Cassie alphabet, and they call John Roberts the father of Cassie literature. Um, and also there are there are there are others like um, Gordon Roberts and John Roberts who set up hospitals and things like this. But um, yes, there's certainly I think more of a kind of acknowledgement now of what was also lost um, through that sort of basically quite quite harsh especially in the early days um you know uh, christianization um you know like the the uh, early missionaries would lock away converts in compounds and not allow them to see their families and this kind of thing and also make worked quite hard to make sure that the traditional culture which they saw as pagan wasn't allowed in to the church and things like that and um you know i think actually that a lot of the, that, that that did breed a little bit of a uh, little bit of resentment and i think if you speak to people Certainly in the Senkasi community, there's a lot more uh, sort of a little bit more uh, criticism and, 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 and sometimes hostility as well, I'd say. Um, but even within the Christian community these days, definitely um, there's more of it. Yeah, it's more of a critical eye being cast. But for, for a long time in the literature, they had a free pass, I think, the, the missionaries, um, because I think the history was just too close. And the whole of Kasi society still to this day but certainly you know 20 30 years ago was centered around christianity really um it's it's kind of like wales would have been in the 1940s in that sense uh, in terms of influence you know yeah i should sort of um if you like following on from that i i've read nigel jenkins's book and mm -hmm. um so that's sort of that was written kind of 30 years ago i guess and, yes um so his reception um well he he meets or he writes of meeting people who are, who are very positive about about the welsh missionaries and and and, and what they did for um, cassie culture um but I, I guess would you think it, when you when you went there could you had you read nigel's book and and how did it differ then your experience of going into that with that knowledge i guess yeah i i had read nigel's book um yeah it has to, it has changed because i think nigel, nigel was there in the, in the early 90s and um so i think yeah i think probably the um it's become shillong is now a much bigger city than it was when nigel went there and the cassie people are a lot more you know, global culture is such a massive influence and much more accessible now than it was back then. So I, I, it's it's almost like 
I think uh, probably the Welsh connection is less lesser known now than it was when when Nigel went there, and um, and I think that the the, the the sort of the the popular imagination of what Welsh missionaries were like and what they did, and who they were, it is becoming a little bit distorted and and warped and also misunderstood, um, or just completely forgotten. You know, especially in communities that aren't Presbyterian, which now make up at least half of the population of the Cassie Hills, um, but. There were a lot of still common common themes, and I, I think, in general, what I think still think what Nigel Jenkins says at the end of his book is probably true. In that, um, he says that um, the Cassie, you know, that eventually somebody was going to end up going there and enforcing their will on the Cassie people. You know, a, a European culture was going to go there, and that he felt that Cassie people at the time in the 90s felt that it, they were grateful that it was the Welsh rather than um, say the the British Empire. Um, I think there are aspects of what the Welsh did there which did protect Cassie culture from some of the things that happened. So for instance um, Thomas Jones the first missionary actually had to flee didn't he because um, the East India Company were trying to monopolize well were monopolizing the orange uh, uh, growing industry in the area at the time and he eventually got chased out by um, a fellow uh, called Harry Inglis who had local connections in the judiciary and was representing the East India Company and um, he had to flee to, to Calcutta because a bunch of thugs went to uh, to, to, to kill him um, but he was known for representing Cassie farmers in court uh, against land grabs from the East India Company and Harry Inglis. The only problem was is that Harry Inglis's father-in-law was the judge. Um, so these kind of things um, put um, Welsh missionaries in 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 in, in sort of a good 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 position into for a lot of Cassie people. Also, the the translation work and the protection of the language. I know from reading reports from the eighteen sixties that you know the, um, the the British Empire as it was then didn't want the Welsh missionaries learning Cassie and teaching Cassie um, literature to people. Uh, they wanted to just homogenize the Cassie Hills into uh, Bengal, basically, and um, encourage them to learn Bengali and write in Bengali script, and they saw no point. But, you know, this is um, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, totally different cultures. You know, the Cassie people are mountain people uh, who've come from um, disparate parts of um, Southeast Asia, and the Bengali people are plains people with a different sort of uh, totally different culture and language and script. And I think um, the Welsh missionaries were quite stubborn in their refusal to uh, to teach uh, the Bengali script and the Bengali writing, um, even though even though they could, um, a lot of them did speak Bengali, but um, they decided that it, that it was more important. And I think that was probably something that was probably something to do with their understanding of. Uh, Welsh as a language and its interaction with in the British Empire in Wales. Um, they, I think they had the same attitude when they went to the Cassie Hills and they, they always seem to stress the importance of, of language to culture. Um, and I think there are those little bits that w meant that the Welsh approach was different to what the British Empire was doing in, in other areas. Um, but overall, it still completely falls under the uh, the umbrella of of, of um, colonial venture, um, as as uh, Chris mentioned, you know, um, imperial agents of imperialism, uh, certainly, and lots of them were imperialists as well, and totally believed in white supremacy and all that kind of thing. It's important not to airbrush any of that out, um, you know. Um, so you know, let's, I think with any of these connections, they were good. They were good missionaries, and they were they were less good missionaries, and and they were missionaries that. Um, were there for religious purposes and there were missionaries there because um, they had imperial tendencies as well. Um, um, but I think overall, I would say that Cassie literature and culture is probably a little bit better off in that it was the Welsh missionaries that got there first <laughs> rather than the East India Company, but that's my personal opinion. And I think if you talk to Cassie people, you'll just get as many different answers as the uh, day is long about that one. Yeah, thank you. Um, does any anybody else have any? Yeah, um, Rowan, could, uh, apologies, I couldn't really hear about that beautiful air that um, 
Gareth saying, I am a pilgrim to. Could we go back to that for a second? Um, did you say that it was from the 1880s? Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's called um, Hiraith, H-I-R-A-E-T-H, -E okay. um, which is uh, Welsh for longing. Okay. Um, and it was written by a guy called Daniel Prothero, um, uh, P R O. T-H-E-R-O-E, -E, I think, in the 1880s. And he 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 went to, um, he moved to America when he was quite young, when he was about 19. Um, and then he became a, um, a composer whilst in America. And so I'm, I'm thinking that he wrote this, he wrote this when he was in America. And I think he, he I'm assuming he wrote it, titled it Hiraith, because he was thinking about Wales back home. And so that's where that tune comes from. But um, what I was mentioning before in this, in the way we're describing it is in, it reminds me a lot of um, some traditional Welsh folk tunes. And mm -hmm. so I think that he must have been channeling a little bit of that when he was composing it. Um, because it, it has the, it, it, it does have the sort of the character of a lot of old Welsh hymn tunes, but so many of the old Welsh hymn tunes are actually based on folk tunes um, that that character comes through especially in these old ones but yeah that that's where that um, melody comes from and it hadn't been sung to any other lyrics before as far as i know no um i think if you check there's um there's a few different websites i think hymnary.org was where i kind of found some of the information on it okay. um they have yeah, like a quite a large database of hymns and sometimes there's lots of information um but you get them in hymn books from the 1880s in America um, and, and especially the sort of start of the 20th century editions you, you get a lot of um, th these type of hymns um, and this one in particular but um, I haven't heard it sung in the Cassie Hills probably because it's now too old-fashioned mm -hmm. um, the same with Brynia Cassia uh, it's just not sort of it's just not modern enough sounding um, but um, I don't know, I think the melody on its own, when it's sort of stripped back like that and delivered in a kind of folk style, mm -hmm. actually kind of uh, works quite works quite well. Yeah, because I don't understand um, Welsh, obviously, but I could certainly get that longing. It kind of reminded me of a lament, I suppose, mm. from our own tradition. And I suppose I was wondering what it would sound like unaccompanied without any instrument, because, you know, the way instrument changes the meter and the, the flow of traditional singing in general um, yes. and I was kind of trying to figure so that's why I asked had it been to any other lyrics is there any recording that I could listen to it unaccompanied oh I'm sure there are I, I think um there's plenty there'll be plenty of recordings of it because I mean, it's because it's a hymn it'll be it'll be performed by you know opera singers and I'm sure if you go on YouTube you can find it and also um choral arrangements and that kind of thing I don't know if I've heard someone do a completely a cappella version of it mm -hmm. but it would definitely work because it's such a haunting tune yeah yeah, yeah. and it, like you say you can strip back that meter yeah. uh the rhythm and just sing it straight um you could deliver a lot more emotion into the into the into the yeah, delivery yeah. i mean the words are by william williams pantacallin so the words are like about a journey you know um and you know perere no if i am a pilgrim um but it's not one of his more graphic ones, one of his more kind of um, uh, journey songs, I'd say, talking about his 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 travels, you know. Um, so, but I don't know. There might also be versions with different words because that that happens a lot as well. Yeah, no, the borrowed airs for different songs. Yeah, that would happen a lot, as you say. Thank you. That was wonderful. No, no problem. Yeah, it's um, just following up on that. It, it um, because we've we've already sort of heard it's sung, Pereira and I've sung to the New Britain tune, and mm -hmm. it but it, oh. it changes, doesn't it? It changes the feel of the the piece completely to hear it to the different tune, yeah. and yeah. um, was... yeah, it's it's much more um, kind of haunting and mournful, yeah. really. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, I, was, I just, I, uh, do, you, do you know whether Pereira um it was sung to, it, it was sung to that sort of, mostly sung to that tune? In, yeah, in as far as I know, yes. Until the sort of 60s and 70s when 
yeah, when, yeah, when sort of the Amazing Grace came out, came became more yeah, popular. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think this is probably so. I'd say around the time when you had the sec the, 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 the Methodist revival, the second one in, in Wales, around the sort of you know 1905, 1906, this would have been the type of tune I think that that would have been quite popular. Um, you know, um, this kind of yeah, slightly, slightly dark, um, moody Welsh tunes that you can put kind of several sort of layers of harmonies on and. Um, you can really make very dramatic, very melodramatic in style, which is definitely a Welsh thing. Um, and I think um, this is what drew me to the tune because I, I really like that style, that melodrama of Welsh, like, traditional Welsh music that's, that worked its way into the into the hymns. Yeah, and that you still hear the, the, the folk aspect of it or the folk song melody yeah. in it too. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, is there any any other questions? Um, anybody? Um, I I could say another <laughs> a couple of comments. Um, just thinking about. Um, I, I mean, I'm 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 relying heavily on Ni Nigel Jenkins in, in my line of questioning. Yeah. But um, yeah, he. Um, I was going to say, yeah, he's talking about. Um, and it's sort of what you've touched on here as well that the that that history of the of the Welsh mission has not uh, or at that point had not been written from the from the Kazi perspective mm. yeah and um I guess yours you, what you've sort of shown uh today really or talked about a bit um especially with um what Siam was that her name the water uh, of, uh, Esther Siam yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah um th that perhaps that that work was beginning to happen now um that yeah yeah more, more histories are being written from different perspectives yeah um, yeah i think the difficulty in the past has been that a lot of the history is being written by presbyterians who um sort of would, would have would have been basically the, the direct consequence of the welsh mission being there so cassie presbyterians so they tended to not cast a very critical eye on it and tended to focus on all the sort of positives like schools and hospitals and you know um but certainly yeah esther's work and in general kim pan sing non king kim pan sing non king Ri as well who wrote that collection of legends and folk tales you know there's a lot more kind of uh you know a more critical eye being cast on on the welsh mission and, and that relationship and that was part of the purpose of the project as well, was to try to kind of draw that out in the musical um, dialogue that we had um, and not try to try not to speak on behalf of the Cassie people, but to um, open up a conversation about it. And I think that's still something that's ongoing. It's not something that we've, I don't think you, you can ever complete. Um, but the fact that um, Cassie musicians felt free to be able to share their music and, and their opinions and songs and, uh, with me and you know um also talk about issues that are affecting them today as well rather than having to constantly look backwards and talk about the past um you know um we were also there's songs on the album that reference um there's one that references references a bill that was being passed in 2018 by by one of the cassie uh door bar which is like a kind of a council of of, of cassie men and um you know there's a lot of kind of contemporary culture as well which is also i think an important thing to uh, have if you're having a kind of cultural dialogue in this way that it's not being dictated into a kind of um a backwards looking thing that you're actually talking about the effects today of that kind of of the past yes but how is it affecting people today um and also you know what else is going on um i think this is um i mean when i was doing my PhD. I was looking at a lot of um, work by people like Rustam uh, Barucha and Homi Baba, who did this kind of intercultural stuff in the 80s and 90s through the medium of theatre. But um, a lot of the um, approaches and theories and arguments that they made about intercultural work and how, how it can be more inclusive made, made its way into the way that I approached um, my, my, my musical collaboration in the PhD. 
yeah, I wonder whether you could say a bit about the, the theatre piece, um, Performing Journeys, actually, mm -hmm. um, because that sort of came before, didn't it, in a way, the um, Kazi Cymru Collective? Yes, so that kind of, it kind of, we were developing it at the same time. Um, but so basically, uh, it's kind of, it was put together quite experimentally. Um, we, 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 you know, we, it, it developed over a long period of years, really. Um, so Rhys uh, Aptrevor and Lapliang CM would work together, first of all, just on physical uh, connectivity. So they would be kind of trying different movements, um, poses. Um, they would talk as well and share. So um, Lapliang would uh, recite Cassie myths uh, in Cassie uh, and sometimes in English. Rhys would read letters from missionaries written back home to the to, 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 to the uh, mission headquarters in Liverpool um, and they developed over a period of time into kind of like a way of telling the story um, in which both actors kind of represented, Rhys represented really all of Wales and Lapyang represented all of Cassie Hills but sometimes those lines became quite blurred and um, the piece is really interesting, I think. It, it, it kind of, it, it, it's it's a narrative with musical accompaniment, but there's a lot of physical uh, movement in it. There's a lot of performing. There's a lot of kind of balancing work that Rhys and Lapidiang do. Um, and I think the way that it came across was that it was kind of a, a dialogue between uh, Rhys and Lapidiang and in which they were kind of telling each other's stories. Um, and eventually you just get this kind of... Um, amazing crescendo where Lapdiang um, talks about um, this Cassie uh, myth about uh, uh, Lapalang the stag and it kind of builds up to this to this big kind of a uh, crescendo at the, at the pot at the end and it's it's quite a remarkable piece I, I don't know if there's plans to revive it because it's it's toured in India and toured in Wales but you know only very briefly before Covid and then we, we, I think we, we literally stopped we literally stopped the tour two weeks before lo the first lockdown and then it hasn't been sort of picked up since then so but it would be good to to be able to share more of that because it's it is it, it's an it's another way of looking at the relationship and because you've got this dialogue going back and forth between Cassie actor and a Welsh actor and then Cassie musician Benedict Taniota and myself as a Welsh musician you get this kind of um really interesting combination of music and uh, dance uh, and movement um, all telling this kind of really rather unknown story really um, it's still not a story that is very familiar in Wales um, especially when you, when you compare it to sort of other overseas ventures like Patagonia which is kind of like always talked about um, I'm not quite sure well I have my own theories as to why but I think um, you know it's just one of those things that I think we do need to talk about more in Wales and this aspect of our history um, because I don't feel like we uh, we know we know ourselves well enough if we don't talk about this type of thing. Yeah and that's that's a really really good point actually um, that's something something I think um, I think it's in Nigel's book at the end as well it's sort of this thinking about what um, what it, what it was uh, for the for the Cassie people, but also what what is it to Wales? What was it to Wales? What mm. is it to Wales now? Um, yeah. And yeah, you say you know we know or we think we know a lot about Patagonia, or, or that's um, something yeah. that we talk about. But this this relationship was ongoing from the eighteen forties till like 1969 yeah. um, um that's yeah that is an incredible um continued connection isn't it um yeah it's a massive chunk of time isn't it it's you know you think about all the changes that would have happened in that period and in, when you realize as well that the cassie people prior to that didn't have standardized literature or a standardized alphabet or anything like that so you know the welsh influence in that period is quite massive um and i think it's it's one of those things that you think would be more well known, but it's mainly just known in Wales. I think within the sort of the older Presbyterian community, people who remember collection boxes and things on their um, mantelpieces, but probably the rest of it. There's um, like the historian Alec Jones said, 
it's probably just a little bit too uncomfortable with uh, modern notions of Welshness. The you know the, the idea that we like to see ourselves as you know victim the, the victims of colonialism as opposed to like perpetrators of it. And I think that um, that there's an element of that as to why it's not so well known here. It doesn't fit in with the sort of the sort of squeaky clean vision of modern Welsh nationalism. I think. And also the decline of of chapel culture. Um, as, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I guess when you you're saying, you know, there are other things to talk about. Um, we're finding new ways to express our culture, where at one time chapel was so important as certainly as a vehicle for Welsh language culture. Yeah. Um, that, that, that it's reflected of, of that too. Yes. I um, said so there's a bit in um, Gwalia in, in Cassia where Nigel Jenkins talks about meeting a choir that are rehearsing to come back to Wales to reconvert yeah. the Welsh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's quite a popular joke in the, in the Cassie Hills now. People will say, oh, we're, we're going to come back and convert you all, <laughs> reconvert you all. <laughs> yeah, which is really funny. Um, yeah, does any anybody else like to ask anything or make a comment? I don't want to. Could I ask, um, I'm sorry if I missed the name, what was the name of the instrument, Gareth, that the Cassie community are playing? Uh, it's a uh, duitara, uh, so it's D U I T A R A, okay. and it's um, it's actually a Sanskrit word, which means two strings. It's not a Kasi word originally. It's, you get versions of it all throughout the northeast, um, but um, the, the this distinctive Kasi way of playing with those rhythms really gives it a kind of Kasi style mm -hmm. that you kind of. Um, it takes a bit of time to learn, but once you get the rhythms in your head, it's a lot easier uh, to sort of interpret the instrument in a kind of authentic Cassie way. <laughs> yeah, because we've a real interest here, I suppose, in our house, we we try to find and connect, I suppose, our, our Shano songs, Oscailga, and our traditional singings in English with world music instruments. So, you mm -hmm. know, I suppose we would, as as well as a lot of other um, singers, would use the Shruti box from... Right. Um, right. And I recently got for a birthday present the Appalachian, the Mountain Dulcimer, um, right. which works as well, I suppose, you know, with, yeah. you know, the song. So I was really interested in that instrument. Yeah, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, it's a lovely instrument. It's it's a really lovely instrument to sing with. I think it's, it's supposed to be one of those instruments that just goes well with the voice. Yeah. Um, again, because I think... Um, it's traditionally sung around the around the hearth and I think that kind of um balance you, you you can very quickly get a nice balance with your voice when you play it yeah. um and it does become quite hypnotic the the, ryth the rhythmic styles become very kind of repetitive and hypnotic and actually you can get you can see how people would get kind of um lulled into a kind of rhythm when you're doing sort of repetitive work say you know, like sewing around the fire that kind of thing at night you know um one of the songs on the album is from like a cotton um prepare people preparing cotton you know like um after the harvest separating the balls from the sort of sticky seeds sort of making cotton balls and things like this mm -hmm. you can see these kind of really repetitive tasks would actually go really well with the duitara yeah. um just that rhythm keeps you going you know and your imagery i suppose for me looking at your it was a, a beautiful, beautiful presentation um the imagery um i suppose in terms of writing songs there's so much inspiration there and i suppose in 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 your tradition and in both the irish tradition and uh, metaphors are are you know are so strong um, yeah. and even just looking at that imagery that you had you know i know you had mentioned in i am a young man that you used the metaphor of the the fisherman uh, yeah. but you know just looking at those imagery I, you know there was lots of different ideas in terms of writing a song based on it which was beautiful yeah it was really it's been really um Thought provoking, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks. Well, thank yeah. you. It's really nice. Really, really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any? Just thinking, we're coming sort of, sort of to the to the close. I think, and maybe um, just ask you, Gareth. You you've just recently been back to mm. to India, haven't you? I'm not sure if you were in exactly the same place this time, um, but yeah, I wonder if you could say a bit about that, and maybe there are any more plans for yeah, another. Yeah. 
Um, so I, I, I recently went back to India, the first time since the pandemic. Um, I did go back to the Northeast. So I was invited to play at a couple of festivals in the Northeast. One, um, not, not this time in, in Meghalaya, but um, one in Manipur and one in Arunachal Pradesh. Um, but I managed to squeeze in a trip to Shillong in between those two performances. And also in Manipur, I performed with Lapdiang Siang and Apkarman Skem. Uh, two of the Cassie Collective musicians, and we performed um, at a pet festival there. Because I think the interesting thing about the Northeast is that it's there's so many different cultures and languages there, um, but they are also kind of a part of a, their own community in that there are people who are working to kind of connect, especially in the arts, between different cultures in the Northeast. And Lapdiang is certainly one of those. So she was connected with people in Manipur. So we went and performed there. Um, and then up in Arunachal Pradesh, uh, a festival called Zero, which is really amazing, um, in a beautiful, beautiful spot up in the mountains. Um, and that, again, that was just a solo um, performance, but it was it was really nice to be able to play the Duitara and explain a little bit about my um, work with the Cassie musicians. And also the people of Arun Arunachal Pradesh, they also have the same instrument. They call it the Dotara, but it's the, it's the same instrument, essentially. And then... Um, we, the final performance was in uh, on the other side of India, um, Jodhpur Rif, which is in Rajasthan. And that was in a big medieval fort and it was just really lovely. I managed to partner with the festival and arranged for Cassie musicians to come and do a Cassie music showcase. So um, there, was a, there was a sort of an interactive session um, where they spoke about their tradition and their culture. Uh, and that was one morning. Then in the evening, uh, no, actually, the, sorry, the next day they had a concert at dawn. Um, so they performed sort of as the sun was coming up um, at the festival. And it was a two-hour showcase of Cassie music, which is ne had never happened before in Job um, you know, I think, you know, you can't really get further apart uh, from Rajasthan to the northeast. It's, you know, they're, they're, they're totally different places. Um, and then I had a performance of my own in which... I performed some Welsh traditional music and then uh, the, Cassie, the Cassie musicians came and joined me on stage and we performed some of the songs from the album together. And then some musicians from Rajasthan who I've been working with online for the past two years um, joined me on stage as well. And we did some songs from their tradition. And then we all did a number all together, um, sort of Cassie musicians on one side and Rajasthani musicians on the other side uh, and me in the middle. And we did this kind of... Um, Rajasthani tune with a Cassie bit spliced in and then with a Welsh bit spliced in at the end and it went down really well I think people were really um, fascinated by it really because it was such a it's, you know the, the, the northeast is such an unknown part of India to most of the rest of India it's very people don't really know much about those places they don't know the different cultures and the languages and the music so it was just so new and different to people on top of that you have the Welsh folk element um, and then a bit of Rajasthani music at the same time it just kind of um, it was quite unique I think and so that, that, that really did go down really well um, so I'm hoping to be able to continue those connections I'd like to do more uh, recordings with both the Rajasthani musicians and with the Kasi musicians um, the difficulty for me is trying to find sort of the funds to do it and all this kind of stuff um, it's all, I find it's, you know, um, I, when I was doing the PhD, it was great. I had the support of the university and I had some, um, you know, um, I had the, the, the money, the funding. For, I got, managed to get two bursaries to do the PhD. So I was able to give all my time to the studies and to the collaboration. But um, now that I'm no longer uh, associated with the university, it's it's sort of I have to apply for small arts grants. As an individual, I can't get very much. So um, I'm hoping to try to persuade some festivals in the UK to partner with the festivals in India and bring the musicians over here. Um, and then hopefully to try to find some way to do some more recording and release some more records. But yeah, it's all at the moment just um, pipe dreams really. But I think that the performance is definitely went down well and I think that I can use those as um, leverage to try to get more more money and, and, and a bit and a bit more work done but yeah fingers crossed I suppose. Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, no, that would be wonderful, wouldn't it? To, to be able to, to bring the musicians over here as well. Um, yeah. yeah, I think it's important. I mean, yeah, you know, we have managed to bring the Cassie musicians over for a tour, but a couple of times, but it's important to me that the, the project isn't just a one way thing, you know, um, it's got to be that it's, it's, it's collaborative and that people come over here as well. Um, uh, otherwise you're just kind of repeating a lot of the same old patterns of the past, which you're trying to get away from. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a true collaboration. Well, it's a, a beautiful um, CD, uh, the, the Scythine Kisor, it's, it's really gorgeous. Um, so yes, I recommend everybody go go out and buy a copy. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, yeah, I'm sort of aware we're kind of going over time. Well, we've just reached the end, haven't we? So um, just a couple of um, announcements. Well, Diochen Bauer, Gareth, that's been a really lovely evening. Um, lovely to hear you sing, lovely to see all those images and um, to hear about this work. Um, I, Gareth, um, so I sort of said that he's here in the flesh. I mean, really, he's here digitally tonight, but he will, he is in the flesh on Saturday in St. David's. So any Pembrokeshire people or even people in Wexford who want to jump on the ferry, <laughs> um, Gareth is playing at T. Pererin at seven o'clock um, on Saturday night. So that's correct, yeah, isn't it? That's I believe, right, yeah. And I think there are some tickets left. Um, so yeah, just a, a, bit, a bit of a plug for that. Go and see Gareth, who's brilliant, um, as you have seen tonight. Um, but yeah, you, you'll you'll hear more of his of his music there. Um, and then yeah, just that our next session will be on the tenth of November, and um, I, I, Gareth is kind of allowing me to link to this session by the fact that the tune that he sings Pererin Oif to is called Hiraith. And um, Hiraith, um, as, as, as Welsh people will know, is, is a word that is often uh, called untranslatable, um, but, but we translate <coughs> it as logging or a kind of homesickness. Um, so our session on the 10th of November is with author Pamela Petro, who has recently written a memoir called The Long Field, which is her sort of extended meditation on Hiraith. Um, now, Pamela, is not Welsh, she's actually based in Massachusetts in America, but she came to Wales in the 90s as a student and fell in love with Wales, um, learnt the language and then uh, travelled the world uh, trying to find other people to speak Welsh with and she, she wrote a book about that um, called Travels in an Old Tongue and she's recently um, released this uh, or written this memoir that was actually sh um, shortlisted for the Welsh Book of the Year Award this year. Um, and so she, yes, she's going to give a presentation about um, her identity in relation to Wales and, and how you can perhaps be collected to a place without necessarily coming from that place and what, and what that might mean. Um, so please uh, join us uh, for that session. You can uh, book your space again through the SPAN website. Um, yes, remind us, Gareth is appearing at the Kutch Festival Saturday at 7 p.m. at T. Pererin in St. David's. So there's a new festival happening this weekend. Um, and uh, you can also see, I was gonna say, you can see Lisa O'Neill is playing uh, the night after, but I think she might have sold out. Um, but yeah, so it's just the, the, the Irish connection there as well. <laughs> um, so uh, is there anything more to say um, apart from thank you, everyone, um, uh, I think I've said everything. Do come on the 10th of November. Thanks for for, for joining us um, on this journey. We're kind of making a pilgrimage through these presentations. Um, and um, yeah, Diolch and Vaur, um, North Star, Slan. Um, see you next time. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye everyone. Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.